In this video, we will cover the fundamentals of copying in C++. It's not a hard topic, but it is important to know it well. And if you're coming from another programming language, then it might also be a bit surprising. Let's start by creating an int variable x. I'll set it equal to 1. And now if we create another int y and set that equal to x, then the value of x is copied into y. So they should now both be equal to 1. And they are indeed. Because y is just a copy of x, I can change y, for example by setting it equal to 2, and this will not have any effect on x. You can see that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. There is also some different syntax you can use to make the copy. So I'll just get rid of this line. And instead of using the equal sign here, you can use parentheses. Or you can use curly brackets. In this example, and most others, these three ways of doing it are completely equivalent. Ok, now let's try something slightly different. I'll initialize y with value 3, and then after that I'll set y equal to x. This will override y's value 3 with x's value 1. And just like before, we get a copy of x's value. So if I change x for example to 2, then this will not affect y at all. Next, let's look at how function arguments work. I'll just get rid of this code here. And then I'll create a function called square. It takes an integer num, and the idea is that it will square that number, multiply it by itself. A beginner might try to do num times equals num. But this actually doesn't work at all. Let me show you. Back in main, we can create an integer x and set it equal to 5, and then try to square that number. After that, we print x's value. As you can see, x is still equal to 5. It's not 25 as we may have hoped. The reason why it doesn't work is because the value of x is copied into num. So changing num inside the square function has no effect on x whatsoever. We could change the function so it takes an integer reference as argument, but that's a topic for another video. What we'll do instead is change the return type to integer, and then simply return num times num. Now, back in main, we have to save the result, and then we can print that instead. Now we have seen that integers are copied on assignment and when passed as arguments to a function. All primitive types work like this. But what about classes? Are they different somehow? Let's create a little class that represents a 2D point. It will have two public doubles, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. I'll also add a constructor. It takes the initial value of x and initial value of y. All it does is initialize x and y. Back in main, let's create a point variable called p1. For the x value, I'll pass in 1, and for the y value, 2. 
Next, we can create another point variable, p2, and set it equal to p1. If we print the x and y coordinate for both points, we see that both have x value 1 and y value 2. No surprise here. Now I'll try to change p2.x to 5. What will be printed now? Are p1 and p2 independent variables, or do they refer to the same object? Let's find out. p2.x is now 5, but p1.x is still 1. So changing one does not affect the other. p1 and p2 are completely independent variables. So classes are copied on assignment just like primitive types. They will also be copied when passed as argument to a function. Again, just like primitive types. So if I want to create a scale function, for example, which takes a point and a scale factor, then I cannot simply do this. That's because p will just be a copy of the point we are trying to scale. To fix it, we have to return the scale's point. This might all seem very obvious, but if you're coming from another language like Java or C Sharp, this is probably not what you expected. In those languages, if you set one class variable equal to another, then they both refer to the same object. But C++ always makes a copy unless you specifically ask for a reference or a pointer. Even containers like vector are copied by default. If I create a vector containing 10,000 integers, for example, and then assign it to another vector, it will be a deep copy. Both vectors now have their own 10,000 integers stored in memory. So if I change an element in v1, then it will not have any effect on v2. The first element of v2 is just the default zero. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and want to see more.